Moscow has banned a number of nations from Russia's food market. RT's Peter Oliver now here to tell us more about this. Uh, live from Berlin. Peter, hi, good to see you. Looks like the first serious response from Russia then. Well, Prime Minister Dmitry Medvedev has confirmed that all imports into Russia of beef, pork, cheese, poultry and fish from those countries that backed sanctions against Russia are no longer going to be allowed. So that's a ban on all of those things coming in from the EU, the US, Australia, Canada and Norway. Now, in another move, what's been announced on Thursday, a transit for air travel between Ukraine that would have had a transit stop off in Russia is now no longer going to be allowed to enter Russian airspace. So that means if you were going to fly from, say, Kiev to Hong Kong and you had a, a layover in Moscow, that flight's not going anywhere right now. Now, uh, the, Prime Minister also, the Prime Minister also said that this was a unique chance with regards to the, the ban on imports of, um, of agricultural goods from Europe and elsewhere, that this was a unique chance to solve the problems within Russia's own industry and agricultural sectors. He also said that there was a... Um, if their partners around the world, if their Western partners were to take a more reasonable stance regarding sanctions against Russia, that these this import ban could be um, could be looked at again and perhaps removed. But in terms of from right here in Europe, how important the import, uh, how important I beg your pardon, the export of European goods into Russia are. The agricultural imports from right here last year alone were worth 11.8 billion euros. So. That is now going to be, that's not going to exist in the next year for, um, for European companies to make that type of money. It's a huge chunk of cash that is no longer going to be there because of this ban. Yeah, big money, Peter. You're already talking billions right there. All right, mm. RT's Peter Oliver, thanks very much yeah. for that. Let's take it further now and go live to international trade specialist Nigel Kushner joining us here on RT International. Thanks for coming on. How painful do you think, if at all, perhaps, could the Russian sanctions be for the EU or the US? Um, well, it, it will certainly be painful. Um, this, this episode reminds me of the old Irving Berlin song, anything you can do, I can do better. Um, and I think what Russia are doing is they're saying, if you hit us, we will hit you back equally um, as hard. Now, on a global or on a macro level, I don't think it's going to be as devastating as everyone thinks. Um, although the export of these types of produce uh, to Russia are worth some 12 billion euros um, in 2013, according to the European Commission, that only represents some 10 percent of the overall um, exports from the EU um, to Russia. But that said, it will have a devastating impact on particular countries, uh, including Poland, Romania, um, the Netherlands, um, you will have individual producers who will be hit very hard indeed. If you have perishable goods, you can't simply sell them to someone else the next day for the same price. They're going to lose a lot of money. Well, certainly we talk about the, you, the, the tit-for-tat sanctions, the, the boomerang of, of effect as well. You talk about, oh, it's only 10% of European gross uh, exports. However, it's still a big number when it comes to the billions involved. But in your opinion, uh, Nigel, how long could it take Russia to find substitutes for the European food imports now banned? I mean, is it even possible in some cases? Because as they always say, it's a, it's a two-way street, isn't it, here? Yeah? Um, it is a two-way street, but um, I've read over the last few days that Russia have already uh, been speaking in particular to Brazil, uh, perhaps to Argentina, uh, Belarus, uh, Georgia, Turkey uh, and other countries who may step in um, to assist. And Nigel, what about the, the EU sanctions that now aren't allowing a major Russian discounter to fly to Crimea due to leasing contracts with Boeing? Do you think other airlines could face similar restrictions? Um, I think they may face uh, similar restrictions, but what we're going to see is we now have a response from Russia to the sanctions. Now, the whole philosophy behind the EU sanctions, which we saw, for example, with Iran, are uh, that they ramp up very, very slowly. Um, so I think we're, we're going to have to wait and see um, how the EU responds. I don't think they're going to respond with any particular 
um, sanctions um, in relation to what's happened in the last day. Uh, but, but what's striking is that when the sanctions were ramped up against Iran, there was very little Iran could do. Um, the West didn't really need much from Iran. Um, but that's not the case with Russia. And I think Russia has made very clear that it will retaliate in a proportionate manner. Well, certainly Russia has its, its friends in the BRICS group as well, and a lot of friends, as you know, in the Far East as well, with a recent a historic deal with China worth $400 billion. Uh, just, I mean, I, if we can just get down to the gritty here, Nigel, how long do you think the whole sanctions argument, the sanctions war is going to last? Um, I think that all depends on what will happen um, in Ukraine. Uh, it's as simple as that. All right, and, here, and here we are, Nigel, showing uh, the pictures here on RT International from our uh, Rupley video agency, showing renewed demonstrations on Maidan Square with plumes of smoke back again, a flashback to November of last year. We'll have to continue covering it. Nigel Kushner, international trade specialist, thank you very much.